Good morning. My name is Chitra Velayud. May I know your full name, please? All right. My name is Arundhati Roktema. Thank you very much. And um, where are you from, Arundhati? Uh, I'm from the state of Chhattisgarh, from India. Thank you. Can I see your identification, please? Uh -huh. At this point, no, you don't have to. Okay. Give me your passport, which you'll be taking into the interview room. I'll look at it. That's fine. And I will mm -hmm. hand it back to you. So All right. in the first part of the test, I'll be asking you some questions about yourself. Um, let's talk about what you do. Do you study or work? So I'm a student of class eight, and I study in the school DPS Bhilai, Delhi Public School Bhilai. Um, what do you enjoy about your studies? I feel like all the curricular activities that, that we do apart from our studies would be my favorite part. But in studies, I really love that we learn so many different things and we get so much knowledge about the world. I love that so much. And uh, what do you find difficult or challenging about your studies? Uh, when it comes to history, I'd say it's it gets a little difficult for me because remembering the dates and the names of all those people is a little difficult task for me. And not only in history, but sometimes in civics and even in geography, I've seen dates. So the dates part is a little difficult for me for my studies. Thank you. Um, so let's move on to talk about your home. Okay. Um, do you live in a house or a flat? I live in a house. How long have you lived there? So uh, we have recently shifted into this new house of ours. And it has been almost one year since we shifted here. And earlier we used to live in an apartment, a flat. So which is your favorite room in your new apartment or flat? Uh, I'd say that this particular room is my favorite room because it has all these books and I'm really fond of reading books. So I can just sit here, just grab a book out of the shelf and read it. And it's just so amazing. I love this room. Do you plan to live there in the future in the same flat, in the same apartment? Do you plan uh, to live yes. there in the uh, Yes, uh, I have we have planned that we're going to live here for a long time. We are not sure how long, but it would be a long time. Let's talk about street markets. All right. Do you enjoy visiting street markets in your town? Um, not exactly, because I feel like street markets are very crowded and there are so many people. It's just a bustling crowd. And I'm not really fond of that because I feel very suffocated when there are so many people in the same place. But I definitely enjoy buying those food items from street vendors. So that's my favorite part, I'd say. So do you prefer, if you had a choice, do you prefer to go to malls or street markets? Um, I think I'm going to go to malls because it's summer season going on here. So in malls, we have these ACs, so we don't feel hot there. So I think I'll, I'm going to choose the mall. When was the last time you went to a street market? Uh, I'm not really sure, but I think it was almost two weeks ago. And we went there, we had momos. I'm not sure if you know that. Um, Okay, and we also had bhajiyas. I don't know what do we call them in English, but we had bhajiyas as well. So it was a great time. Let's talk about photos now. All right. Do you like taking photos? Um, you can say I like them, but I don't really have any storage space in my phone, so I can't take any photos. My phone is just filled with my school notes. So I can't take photos, but I love seeing other people take photos because I love how things can be shown in such a cinematic and a beautiful way, but in reality, they are not that beautiful. So uh, that is a really great thing about photography. So I love taking photos and seeing people take photos. Um, you prefer to take photos on your phone 
or using a camera? Uh, probably on my phone only because I don't have a camera. So I just take photos from my phone. Um, thank you very much, Arunpati. Let's move on to part two of the test. In okay. this part, I'll give you a topic and you have to talk about it for one to two minutes. Hmm. Yeah. Before you speak, you'll have one minute to, uh, to think about what you're going to say. Okay. You can make some notes if you wish. So here's some okay. paper and a pencil to make notes. I hope you, you have some with you. Yeah. And here's your topic. Um, okay. Right. So let me just share the topic with you. Okay. Can you see the topic now? Uh, yeah, I can see. Right. Describe something you own, which is very important to you. So now you have one minute to plan. Okay. All right. Okay. Remember, you have one to two minutes for this. So don't worry if I stop you. I'll tell you when your time is up. All right. Can you start speaking now, please? Yeah, sure. So the thing that I own, which is very important to me, would be a gold medal that I won for my science Olympiad, NSO National Science Olympiad. And I got a gold medal, so it is a very important thing for me, and I'm really proud of it. And I think I was in class third when I got that medal, and it was my first gold medal in academics. So it is very important, and I'm really proud and happy that I got that medal. And, you know, it was the first Olympiad that I gave, and it was just a, the medal I got for my first Olympiad. And I studied really hard for that science Olympiad. And I, I had also given the maths Olympiad, but I didn't really score well in my maths Olympiad, but I got the science medal. So it's very important for me. And I've had it for more than seven years now, I think. Or maybe not seven years, five years. Yes, my maths is actually a little bad, <laughs> five years. And yet I, I have kept it on a wall, it's on, a frame and it's just very important to me and whenever I look at it I just feel so motivated that I if I study then I'm going to get a reward like this medal right so it was the first time I was called up on stage and it gave me a lot of motivation to study harder and after that I even started studying for becoming a topper so that science medal the gold medal had a lot of effects on me and I really 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 like that medal so that medal is very important to me and if you say that i have to choose either my science medal or a book to study for the rest of my life then i'm going to choose that science gold medal because it's just very important to me and it's just a great thing for me it just gives me motivation happiness and also makes me feel proud of the thank accomplishments you. i've made thank you welcome So we've been talking about something that you own, which is very yeah. important to you. And in the next part of the test, we'll be talking about a very similar topic, but in a more general way. Okay. 
Um, so let's let's talk about um, the things that people value. Okay. All today, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what do people actually give more importance to in today's world? What are the things that people value in society? What I feel like. And uh, nowadays, people value their devices like smartphones, laptops, computers a lot. They value them even more than they should be valued. And sometimes they just treat their phones like a prince or princess, like having a, a whole case or a whole place just dedicated for that phone. So they value their phones and laptops a lot. Right. And would you say that uh, things have changed since your parents time so uh, yes how it has uh, it has changed a lot because earlier our parents they did not have any phones or these new technologies like internet and all of that things but nowadays many people almost everyone has a mobile and access to the internet and new technology so it has changed a lot and um, what, what were the things that were valued in your parents or your grandparents' time? What gave people status in society in those days? Uh, I feel like uh, for students, especially their academic performance and for people who work, their work profile, where they work and how much do they earn. So that had a lot of value in previous times, but people also valued friendship and their family relationships much more. But nowadays that value for friendship and family is just declining a little bit. So based on what you said, would you say people are more materialistic now? Yes, I agree to that. People are becoming a little materialistic nowadays. Why do you think this is so? Uh, I think the worth for money and, uh, uh, and expensive things has increased a lot because when people see that you have a lot of money, you earn a lot and you have a really expensive things, so they they just feel like you are superior to them and they start giving you more value and respect, I'd say. And because of that, many people have become very materialistic. Thank you. Um... Are people in uh, modern times more focused on their careers than because you did mention that earlier times, in earlier times, people gave a lot of importance to professionalism. Yeah, yeah. So would you say people today are more focused on their careers, maybe with an aim of to you know of earning more money or uh, I don't know. What do you feel? Uh, I feel like nowadays people are focused on having a career and having a way to earn money. And I feel like that's very important. And people are, uh, they want to have a career. But nowadays, because of this COVID-19 virus and the pandemic and all of that, uh, the choices for people's career is not that much because of COVID-19, many people lost their jobs, but then also people want to have a career. So that's great. So people are more focused on their yeah. work. So in a way, you can say that the lockdown was a blessing in disguise in some ways, right? Yeah, you can say <laughs> that. All right, let's talk about the role of advertising. Because advertising, the things you talked about, electronic gadgets and all those things, you know, they probably people start wanting them and buying them after, you know, because of advertising. Yeah. Um, do you think advertising um, has a bigger influence today in people's lives? than? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, it has a bigger influence because nowadays we see advertisements everywhere on our mobile we see ads and our, on our, also on our tvs we see a lot of ads and the things are shown in a very a beautiful way you can say and the bad things about that product are not displayed are not they're not showed there so because of that people want to buy those things but in the earlier times in the past we did not have these technologies where we could show the ads so the amount of ads people were seeing were a little less. And because of that, the ads were really good and 
they were the ads of the on, only the things that are important to the people so those things ads were there so that's why the ads were not that bad earlier but nowadays we see ads everywhere and because of that the human mind the mind of small children and everyone yeah. is just getting affected oh, so they're a menace and especially when it comes yeah. to the younger generation hmm. right thank you very much thank you arundhati that's the end of the speaking test thank you so much thank you <laughs> so how do you feel how do you think you did were well, the questions easy or uh, the questions were easy but i feel like sometimes i was stuttering and sometimes i messed up a little bit no i don't think so at all but the thing oh. is that we always feel when you're a good speaker you always feel that you know you could have done better and you're always yeah. aiming high so that's good but um, i feel you spoke very well for all the three parts um so i'll just give you a little bit of feedback okay all right so basically um Uh, speaking the speaking test is uh, assessed on the basis of four criteria uh, i'm sure that your you know trainer or teacher must have told you in the last session yeah. the first one is fluency and coherence so how well you can you can keep going without too much hesitation and you know too much pausing and the second coherence how well you structure your speech yeah uh, using say connectors and linkers so in mm. grammar we call them conjunctions right Yeah. So using those words how well you've connected your speech and how well you've arranged your ideas. So this is uh, one of the criteria the first criteria. So I feel you're very fluent in that area I think you did well though you felt you were stuttering a little bit or stammering I didn't get the impression at all. You could keep going and uh, you spoke fluently about all the topics. Um your speech was well connected and structured and you used a good range of cohesive devices. or connectors and linkers together we call them cohesive devices so for okay. example you said uh, even not only history you are talking about the subjects that you found a little yeah. bit in part one so not only history but even geography so you actually use those kind of phrasal conjunctions etc hmm. and you gave uh, properly extended answers one thing i'd like to advise you is a couple of questions i asked you were yes no questions right so for yeah. example do you live especially in part one So, do you live in a house or a flat? And you said, okay. "I live in a flat." So that would be the natural way of answering it. But in IELTS, you are expected to give extended answers. Okay. So I live in a flat, and maybe you can add one or two sentences about the. You know, it's a it's a three bedroom flat. In it's in a lovely locality. We have a garden hmm. outside. Whatever you want to say, but just okay. add a couple of sentences. Uh, and make it extended so in case you go beyond the time frame which could happen mm. governor will stop you uh, yeah okay in the speaking module you don't have to worry about timing at all because the examiner is in charge of keeping the time so she will mm. say thank you and she will stop you and move on to the next topic okay right? so only that one point for improvement uh, with regard to yes no questions mm. yeah and uh, the second Uh, assessment criterion is lexical resource which is vocabulary the range of vocabulary you use you used um, a good range of vocabulary a quite a wide range of vocabulary i'd say and uh, the, this vocabulary was more than enough to hmm. you know talk about and describe all the topics that you were talking about for example you used words uh, like bustling i think that was in that was when you talked about the street markets yeah you know, you described it as a bus, as very bustling and crowded places and sometimes feeling a little bit uh, suffocated because hmm. of that and in uh, part 2 i think you spoke about being motivated yeah because of this recognition you got for your performance right you for how motivated you so you use a very good range of vocabulary but again point for improvement try to build your vocabulary still more yeah um there's always scope for improvement try to use a couple of idiomatic expressions All so right. for example in part 2 when you're talking about the prize you got you can say i was on cloud 9 hmm yeah so try to include at least two or three idiom somewhere in, in, during the speaking test because that will take you to the next uh, band score that hmm. is a yeah. criteria that is a criterion for a higher band score 
So just keep three or four general idioms in mind and you can use it wherever you feel it will be appropriate. Okay, yeah. Um, and the third assessment criterion is grammar. So your grammar is very good and you used a good range of structures, Arithuti, including passive voice, etc. So I think you're talking about um, you're talking about the street markets and you said that all those lovely items there, the curios or whatever, they're all displayed, they're shown or displayed in a beautiful way. Yeah. So you use the passive voice, which is really and in, in an appropriate way. So that yeah. would be uh, very nice. Also, you use conditional sentences like if I study such and such yeah. a subject, so conditional sentences, which again, uh, you know, increases the range. So well yeah. done in grammar. Um, continue as you are in grammar, try to use more and more complex structures. To get a higher score, yeah. you have to use a range of complex structures like okay. conditionals, um, uh, sentences with subordinate clauses, sentences with relative clauses. Hmm. Continue using, I mean, continue doing what you're doing now, I'd say. Yeah. Well done. And the pronunciation is also very good. Uh, you are absolutely comprehensible throughout um nice rhythm nice intonation so absolutely you'll get a higher score for pronunciation uh, mm -hmm. when you're not sure about the pronunciation of certain individual words sometimes it happens yeah. always, always consult the online dictionary so you mm -hmm. have oxford online oxford dictionary online or cambridge dictionary online and yeah. you can just find the word and you know listen to it so that you're sure you're pronouncing it correctly for example yeah. uh, plural of technology is technologies technologies mm. the word stress that's also yeah yeah mm. uh, uh, when something is advertised that's called an advertisement Advertising, okay so, yeah chocolate is advertised on the television to attract mm. uh, and those advertisements can be very addictive or can be dangerous <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so you see that the pronunciation changes when the word changes its form yeah you have sometimes you hear people on the media you know on tv or maybe somewhere and then you're not sure okay is what i'm saying correct or is that correct hmm. Immediately go to your online dictionary and yeah. check that so that you know pronunciation is fine but overall very good very good indeed thank okay. you uh well done Arundhati. thank you so much and uh yeah any questions you have for me regarding the speaking test Okay, so uh, if you had to give me a rank from zero to nine for the band rating, so what would you give me? Um, overall, I'm, I'll just tell you the overall score. I'm not yeah. going to give you an individual score in each area. Yeah. Overall score, definitely I'd give you an eight. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, so I'd say your strengths, fluency and coherence, uh, grammar, of course, and pronunciation as well. Area of improvement, vocabulary. Hmm, yeah. So try to improve the range of your vocabulary. You could come down to a 7.5 in vocabulary. Could, you know, hmm. because yeah. of vocabulary. So yeah. work on your vocabulary, improve the range, include mm -hmm. idioms. Next time be sure to include yeah. in your speech. Yeah. And you will definitely get an eight or maybe even above eight. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Thank you.